Now, to go further, I want to return to my history uh, uh, question. I have here a book entitled St. Peter, The Underestimated Apostle by Martin Hengel. Martin Hengel, as you know, is widely recognized as a conservative scholar. And uh, Martin Hengel uh, now recognizes that there has been a split in the early church. There's been a, a, a division between Paul on the one hand and Peter on the other hand. This division is actually explained in more detail in a book uh, by, entitled The Evidence for Jesus by James Dunn. What uh, these scholars are showing is that uh, two streams uh, of uh, teaching went out in the early church. My, my video is back up, but now I'll just go without it. Two streams of teaching. On the one hand, there is Paul, and hence we find uh, in the New Testament uh, statements about uh, uh, Paul saying, for example, that uh, God came down humbled himself, became Jesus, Philippians uh, chapter 2, the Carmen Christi that uh, uh, Nabil spoke about. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse number 6, uh, Paul takes the Shema Israel and he makes uh, two persons out of that one. In the Shema Israel, there was only one Lord God, and now Paul makes it one Lord and one God. One Lord Jesus, one God the Father. He splits them. So, uh, we know the Hadron Collider has split the atom recently. Now, Paul did a splitting way back when. Uh, but Paul is representing one particular view here, and the view of Peter and er other early disciples of Jesus did not survive to be written for us in the New Testament. We do have two documents that are named 1 Peter and 2 Peter, uh, apparently letters of Peter, written in Peter's name, actually. But according to Martin Hengel, these are pseudonymous uh, works which means that somebody else wrote them using Peter's name. Why would they want to do that? Well, one reason is that if you look at 2 Peter, you will see that 2 Peter praises Paul and speaks of him as Brother Paul and speaks about his letters as if these are scriptures on par with the scriptures of God. What these scholars are saying is that somebody who is a follower of Paul, wanting to show Paul in a good light, and wanting to show that Peter accepted Paul, wrote this in order to promote Paul. When we read Acts of the Apostles, which is a sort of history book in the Christian New Testament, we get the idea that there is a, a, a rapprochement between the various sides. Paul on the other hand, on the one hand, James now on the other hand. Uh, Peter has now gone off somewhere else. Why has he gone off somewhere else and we're not even told where? According to Martin Hengel, this is uh, Luke's way of uh, uh, bringing people on stage, taking them off stage. That's why we have the pageants, uh, uh, you know, based on Luke's gospel at Christmas time, right? Luke is good at that, bringing people, taking them off stage. So Peter just goes off elsewhere. We don't know where in, in, in the Acts of the Apostles. We have to find that information elsewhere. And then James becomes the leader of the church. Who is James? It's mentioned as the Lord's brother. Uh, James now is shown to be the brother of Jesus. Paul comes to Jerusalem. When he comes to Jerusalem, James puts him to the test. Are you still following the Jewish laws? And to pass the test, Paul pays for the sacrifices of those who had entered into a vow. And he himself goes into that sacrificial routine. Now, these, uh, this is a couple of decades after Jesus has already said to be died on the cross. And Christians think, Jesus died on the cross, that means a new uh, dispensation has been entered. Now we do no longer follow the law. And Paul himself in his writings seemed to be saying we don't need to follow the law anymore. We have a new dispensation. But he comes to Jerusalem and what is he doing? Following the law, right up to the extent of performing the sacrifices, which we are told that the one sacrifice of Jesus did away with forever. Now, what's happening here? Luke is reconciling and showing us that they are in agreement. But according to Black's New Testament uh, commentaries, uh, it seems hypocritical for Paul to behave in this way. So either he didn't behave in this way, and Luke is just making it such, or perhaps he is all things to all men, as he said himself, in order to win them uh, to Christ. But when we look at this, we see that there was a division, and the early Christian apostles who followed Jesus their message did not survive. Their group survived as a group called Ebionites, named after Matthew's uh, statement, apparently, where, where Jesus says, blessed are the poor. So they were called the Ebionites, the poor ones. 
But their movement died out within the first uh, few centuries of Christianity. What did they believe? They believed not in a triune God, but they believed that Jesus was uh, a prophet and a messenger of God. They believed in only one God, as Muslims today believe. This was the earliest belief. Don Cupid, uh, in his book, uh, Jesus and the Gospel of God, regrets the fact that uh, the Reformation uh, only questioned papal authority, but did not go back as far as to question Paul's authority. We need to ask, who made Paul really a disciple of Jesus? Did he really see Jesus on the road to Damascus? Uh, or did he see something else? Didn't he himself say in his Corinthian correspondence that even the um, devil appears as an angel of light to deceive many? Uh, so who was Paul? And, and why did the original disciples of Jesus uh, have a different view with Paul? And why was there this split between uh, Paul and, and Peter as acknowledged by Martin Hengel? And it's not enough to dismiss the scholars, the scholars by saying Gregory Boyd is an open theist, Martin Hengel is dead now, so he must know that the Trinity is true. No, you have to look at the scholarship of these scholars. These are great scholars who have written their books. And yes, you can refute their books. They're, they're not infallible. They're not God. But at the same time, they are scholars and they're given their reasons, like Gregory Boyd has given his reasons, he has shown that Echad and Elohim are actually used of other individuals who are not God, and they're singular, and yet these plural terms are used. So you cannot say because the plural term is used of God, that means that this is, is actually a, a multiplicity within the one God.